Hey, um, this is new. This is probably going to be the first video that I ever post on my new YouTube channel. Um, this is an art related channel, but I was inspired by all of the other challenge videos from other YouTubers, so I thought that I would give this a shot. But I was inspired by other YouTubers who did the Sharpie challenge, which sounds A, like a lot of fun. I love Sharpies. I'm doing mine on canvas. I don't know what size this is. I think it's a 9 by 12. I'm not too sure. I'll have it linked down below. Um, I'll have everything linked down below, but really it's just canvas and Sharpies. Um, I was inspired by, obviously, this little guy. He's so cute. A little zebra plushie, but in particular, I have this zebra plushie because I have something called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, really quickly, is a connective tissue disorder. Um, it is characterized by faulty collagen production in your body. Collagen can affect all of your different systems, your autonomic nervous system, your joints. Uh, a lot. It's, it's not highly researched, and so I wanted to do this video um, to support the Eller stanlow Society, who I will also have linked down below. Um, they have a lot of good resources for people who have Eller stanlow Syndrome, like myself. Um, and May is Eller stanlow Syndrome Awareness Month, so I thought, what better way to commemorate Awareness Month than to kick off my YouTube channel with a bang and do a Sharpie challenge for Eller stanlow Society. So this is not sponsored by the Eller Stanlow Society. It's not sponsored by anybody. It's just me making a video and I thought that it would be fun to put it on the internet and I hope that you guys like it. In particular for this video, I was inspired by Banana Jamana's recent Sharpie challenge where she used only black Sharpies to do a tiger on canvas and I thought that would look so cool if it were a zebra. So I'm going to do a zebra and I'm going to, um, I'm going to try and cater it towards Eller Stanlow's <laughs> awareness, but, um, I hope that it turns out okay. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get myself pencil sketching on this because I am going to use pencils to sketch. I'm just going to use my regular, I just use Ticonderoga pencils. You can't really go wrong. And then... For the Sharpies, I have all of this linked down below, it's just pencils and Sharpies, but for the Sharpies, I have a pretty big, pretty wide variety of Sharpies here, but because I was inspired by Jamie Jo, I'm taking out all of the colorful ones and I'm leaving only the black Sharpies. Um, I'm going to try and use just one Sharpie, like the one Sharpie challenge, but I really don't know if I can do even a tiny canvas like this with one Sharpie because I'm going to do some, I'm going to do a lot, it's going to be a lot of black. So we'll see how much I can get done with these, with these Sharpies. Um, I also have this massive Sharpie. It says, it says Magnum Permanent Marker in case you guys can't tell, but... Here's what the nib looks like. I don't think I'm going to use that because I think that would be cheating. Please don't hate me, but I totally had to use the big Sharpie and you'll see why. But if you guys want me to do another video with this big old thing, then um, just let me know in the comments down below or like the video or like the video if you like the video. So either way, I'm going to get into it and then I'll show you the final piece at the end. I hope you guys like it. Um, I'll, I'll film another clip after, it's, it's cool. Alright, this is my first voiceover. I like in videos when they get their supplies ready, so that's what I'm doing here at the start of the video, getting my setup ready, using Ticonderoga pencils, extra sharp, Getting together some Sharpies. See these colors? Who needs them? Not me, no sir. Just using these black Sharpies. 
and I'm gonna get started on sketching. So this is perhaps the perfect opportunity for me to talk a little bit about EDS, which stands for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and just kind of share my story a little bit. Uh, then I'll leave you to watch some of the video with some sweet music. I'm starting with a pencil sketch. While I work on that sketch, I'll get to talking. I have had chronic joint pain for about as long as I can remember, and it really worsened over the years. But especially around the time I turned 18 or so, it started to get to be so bad that I, I knew that something needed to be done. I started looking for answers nonstop, and I looked into so many other conditions before finally one of my doctors mentioned Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Uh, it's not very well known, so it takes some people a lifetime to find a diagnosis. We went through a lot of different diagnoses before we found the right one for me, before we found the truth, and it's honestly just so refreshing to finally have an answer to what I've been looking for. If it weren't for one very knowledgeable doctor, I may have never found an answer. Um, so I find it important more and more important to make content to spread awareness. Even if this video doesn't change your life, maybe the link in the description will. Uh, so in the description box I have a link to the Eller Stanless Society. They'll have a little bit more information on this condition, so I really recommend you check them out and maybe they'll have what you're looking for. Eller Stanless has seriously impacted my life. Drawing has always been a great passion of mine, and it's becoming more and more difficult for my hands to keep up with. So because I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a connective tissue disorder, I experience chronic pain in just about every joint. Uh, and in particular, as of late, it's been really bad in my hands, my wrists, my fingers, and throughout this whole video, you can kind of start to tell when my hand starts to really hurt. I'll hold on to the pencil or I'll hold the sharpie in a very strange way and that's my way of dealing with the pain of even trying to write or draw. So I'm currently student teaching and I love every minute of it. I love every student I've ever taught but I've got to say it's pretty tough to teach when, when it's difficult for you to stand for extended periods of time, when it's difficult for you to take stairs when it's difficult for you to write on the chalkboard. And anyone battling any kind of condition understands that a lot of things in life have to come second to your health. So if you're watching this, then just know that I'm here with you and I'm not giving up anytime soon. So I talk at the end of this video a little bit more about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and what that means. But there are actually multiple Ehlers-Danlos syndromes, and there are different subtypes of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. What I have is the hypermobile type. Uh, there's no genetic marker for the hypermobile type, but it is a genetic condition. But because there's very little research about Ehlers-Danlos syndrome as a whole, then there's not too much that they can do to actually confirm a diagnosis aside from genetic counseling, which is where they talk to you about your family genetic history and basically any other conditions that you have that might uh, be associated with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. In particular, I have uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune thyroid disease. I have a few other conditions that are secondary to my Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, including postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, stuff like that. They're all very common, actually, uh, about as common as even more so common than Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, but because Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome often goes undiagnosed for so long, the statistics for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome make it appear to be rarer than it really is, which is why it's so important to actively spread awareness, because if I had seen a video like this, I might have gone to my doctor and I might have had a diagnosis even sooner than I did. So I hope that this video can help somebody out and if it can't help somebody get diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I hope that it can help people who have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome to feel a little bit more at peace. I know that in particular when my hands started to get really bad, I was kind of devastated. Um, drawing becoming difficult for me was one of the most difficult parts of dealing with my new diagnosis. 
it was difficult for me to not want to give up on all of the things that I love doing. Art being one of them, teaching being another one of them, and I hope that... I hope to be a success story one day. I hope to overcome a lot of the obstacles that I'm seeing right now from miller Stanley Syndrome, and I hope that that makes other people feel a little bit better about their struggles and what they have to deal with. Even if it's not Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I like to learn from other people and I hope that one day I can help teach other people. So you can see here in this clip, that's how I'm holding the sharpie because it's just too difficult for me to try and hold it like a regular pencil or like a regular marker. You can see my hand shift so much. I'm sorry if that's troublesome, but uh, it's really the only option that I had. I didn't know that this I didn't know that this piece was going to be so intensive in terms of taking its toll on my hand and my joints but it really did wind up being a struggle and there are good days for me and there are bad days for me and this was one of my good days so I was feeling a little beat up I was feeling a little bit uh, melancholy after this video because I really thought that I could handle more than this but we all have our limits and sometimes we meet those limits a little bit faster than we anticipate this piece in and of itself took me a really long time to do which is why there are a lot of jump cuts, because otherwise this wound up being like, even sped up two, three, four times the speed. It wound up being like a 45 minute video. It took me like well over two hours to get this piece sketched and colored. The Sharpies don't do it uh, much justice in terms of a large canvas. It was so difficult to cover that much surface area with just a singular sharpie. I went through all of my sharpies. You can see towards the end that they start to run out of ink. I think my favorite part about this entire piece is the mane. I know that my my boyfriend said that he really liked the mane. It was his favorite part, but I really liked how well, like you can see here, I like how well the effect of the background coming up to the mane went. I think that it added a really nice realistic touch. Here's where I used the Magnum Sharpie. You can see where my fingers were hyperextending. If my fingers hyperextend too far, if any of my joints hyperextend too far, my joints will actually dislocate or they'll sublux, which is a partial dislocation, which is why I had to be careful. In the canvas, you can see small dots because the ink from the Sharpie didn't actually get into some of the crevices of the canvas and I really liked the effect that that had on the zebra I think it really helped it to pop from the background but trying to go in and color in each little spot that had a hard time absorbing the ink from the sharpie wound up just being too much for my hand to handle so after I colored in the background with a normal sharpie I went in with the magnum sharpie so that I could fill in some of those holes and really make the background as dark as possible. I probably should have taken more breaks while I was doing this but I really didn't want it to to take that long. I had very little sunlight while I was filming this. Um, there was a lot of ca cloud coverage so I was really working against the clock here, but overall I was really happy with the time in which it came out. And you can see here, I am frantically switching Sharpies. I'm trying to find one that's not all used up, and I'm really struggling to get some ink out of these pens. That's all I really had to say about the piece until the clip at the very end, so... I'll just give you some music for the last few seconds of this clip. Here's my final piece. 
It looks much better from far away, as with most of my artwork. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I ran through all of my Sharpies, and I lied, and I had to use this. Oop, focus. Oop, focus. Thank you. Um, I did have to use the Magnum Sharpie. Um, I thought that my hand could handle all of this action, but it really couldn't. It was starting to hurt a lot. Thanks to my Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I get pain in my hands, um, especially when I'm writing or typing. I'm happy with how it came out, and um, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about future videos that I'm going to make. My hand hurts. I am participating, hopefully, in June's YouTube Artist Collective. The theme is Masquerade Ball, and I wanted to get a head start on it today, but because my hand is hurting really bad, um, I'm probably not going to be able to get that started today, which is fine, because there's actually another video that I'm really excited to work on, and I'm actually going to see if I can get that filmed today. So if you guys are interested in seeing any videos of mine, any future artwork, if you like what I did here, um, if you like me, I mean, this is, this is my first video, if you like my vibe, I guess, please subscribe. Ooh. If you like my vibe, please subscribe. That's fun. Somebody's got to have that as their outro somewhere on YouTube, but... If you are interested in seeing any more videos of mine, please subscribe to my channel, leave a comment down below so that I can respond to your feedback. I really appreciate all forms of feedback. Um, let me know how I can improve and let me know if you like my stuff. Now for my channel, not every video is going to be about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, so if you came here expecting a lot of Eller Stanlos related videos. That's not what this channel is going to be about. It's going to be about my artwork, but as I do with all other aspects of my life, I will advocate, I will continue to spread awareness of Eller Stanlos, especially since I have Eller Stanlos, um, in everything that I do. So you'll still see inklings of information about Eller Stanlos syndrome. Um, so Please feel free to subscribe if you'd like to support me, and I hope that you like the rest of my stuff. And before I end this video, I did want to talk about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. You know, I made the piece here, but I did want to talk about what it is. I have, uh, I have been diagnosed with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which basically means that my connective tissue is so soft um, that my joints hyperextend. So my joints... I've always been double jointed, which isn't a real thing. If you are double jointed and you experience pain in your joints, I definitely recommend talking to your doctor about the hypermobility spectrum or hypermobility syndrome, hypermobility spectrum disorder. There are so many different actual conditions related to being double jointed. And uh, I need a lot of support for my joints. And you'll see in some of my videos, uh, those joints even include my fingers, so I do even have braces and splints for my fingers. I didn't use them in today's video. I didn't think it was going to be that intensive, but it really was, so that was my bad. By the time I turned 18, I could feel pain in just about every joint in my body, and that's because my joints are hyperextending whenever I do absolutely anything. So if I stretch, I'm hyperextending without realizing it, and so later on, I'll have torn the connective tissue, I'll have torn ligaments, muscles, because you're not supposed to bend that far, and I didn't realize this until very late into my life. And a lot of damage that's done by hypermobility, or if you have like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, it's best to catch it as early as possible because then you're not tearing things, you're not having continuous injuries due to hyperextension. So, that's why I wanted to make this video so that hopefully if any of you out there are having any problems or if you know anybody who's hypermobile, maybe you could um, spread the awareness of these types of connective tissue disorders and that could really help people to improve their quality of life now or later on if they don't have any problems now. So that was very long-winded, <laughs> but... Um, I really hope that you learned something from this video. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you stick around for some more of my videos. Um, thank you so much for watching, 
and I will see you in the next video.